This module is clinical care and population health. When you finish this module, you'll be able to display understanding of how to manage difficult conversations with clients, list appropriate strategies for safe disposing of unused opioids, and describe medications available and their effectiveness in opioid rescue, including naloxone. Welcome back, and this talk is about educating patients on safe opioid use. The learning objectives for this talk are educating patients on safe opioid use. The learning objectives for this talk are to describe the vital pieces of education and help patients identify available resources that they can use when they're at home. So here's the education that really every patient should get. But I'll tell you, it's important to not give them all of this information. And that sounds contradictory, but it, think about the patient's experience and where you are talking to them. They're not going to be able to bring all of this information home with them in their heads. If you can provide them pieces of paper or something that they can read at home, that's important. But we'll go over each of these pieces of, of education. But when I'm educating patients on this, I'm picking out things that are specific to them as the patient and where I think their, their risks or necessarily needs are for education. And then I provide them with all the other information that they can read on their own time. I want them to hear from me what I feel is most important. And we'll go through each of these as to why they may be important for specific patients. So first, every patient should understand why they're prescribed the medication they are. And this is about risks and benefits that they should expect. Oftentimes when we're treating patients with pain, the expectation of pain is that I take a pill and my pain goes away. For certain patients with chronic pain, that is not going to be the case. We might say you take a pill, your function is going to get better, but we're not going to be able to move the needle very much on your pain score. But we'll be able to get you doing the things that you like to do and get back some quality of life. So understanding, helping the patient understand that they're prescribed a medication and what we expect those benefits to be from that medication, both for from the perspective of when can they see those benefits, how long those benefits will last, and what are realistic expectations of benefits that they can under they can uh, accept. So when we have uh, chronic pain patients, oftentimes when they're started on appropriate medications, their pain gets much better, but then they go out and do activities that they haven't done in years, then their pain gets worse. Helping them understand that if you have chronic pain, you're not necessarily going to be able to go run a marathon again, but you'll, go, you'll be able to go walk around the block and garden and do the things that you like to do. Setting those expectations up front, you're much more likely for patients to uh, treat themselves appropriately and ease them into better pain control. In addition to why the patients prescribe the medication for benefits, it's important to talk about risks of the medication. Each medication carries its own risks, and certain medications with other medications also carry additional risks. Be very clear when you're talking to patients about what those risks are. Again, giving them kind of risks that are they are likely to commonly see and risks that are serious to them are both risks that I will describe to patients. As a brief example, when I'm talking to patients about opioids, Opioids, I will talk to them about the risk of unintentional overdose and addiction. Those are serious risks. They're not as common as, say, something as constipation. They need to understand both of those risks. I'll tell them about constipation and what we can do to manage their constipation. I'll also tell them about the serious risks and what they should do to manage those serious risks or tell us about those serious risks if they happen and what we are doing to help them mitigate those risks. So if it's an opioid, making sure they're not prescribed a, a, a benzodiazepine and making sure that they have naloxone available to them. How do you mitigate risks? Because every medication has a risk and we understand that, you should be helping the patients understand their risk to benefit ratio. When these patients are prescribed medication, the next important thing is that they should be using their medication as prescribed, and they should know when to call their doctor. When we're talking about managing pain, we will very frequently see patients use up all of their medications in the first couple of weeks within their prescription and go through really bad pain and call the clinics, and then they come back to their next appointment or get their next refill. That's not appropriate medication use behavior, and what we really want to get through to patients is that 
we believe the medication we're prescribing to you in the amount, in the quantity, and the frequency is appropriate to manage your pain over the time frame we're giving you this prescription. If you are using it appropriately and you still have pain or you have an unforeseen side effect, that is important information, you should call your doctor. If you are not using your medication as we've prescribed it or it has been prescribed to you, we don't necessarily know which direction is better for you. In the case of pain, oftentimes more medication is not necessarily better, and in fact, there are certain situations in which more medication is actually worse. This could cloud the picture of patients are not using the medications as they've been described to them. I almost often always talk about those first two points with all patients because I feel that those are the most important. The next two meta, uh, the next two uh, lines on here, I pick and choose who I'm talking to these things about, really dependent upon what their risk factors are. So they should be storing their medication safely. Every patient should do that. Patients that I will put that on the higher priority list are those with uh, uh, little ones in their household or anybody that is around anybody with a substance use disorder, those things should be locked away. Oftentimes now we're recommending that patients actually lock their medications in a safe. It is no longer enough just to put them in a medicine cabinet or wherever they store their other medications. If risks are that great, safety should be that great as well. So think about how you're going to tell somebody to manage their medica or store their medications safely. If this is an important enough point, if there are risks at home, not just to them, but to other people that they live with, that should be something that you would want to mention up front to them. If it's something where the patient lives alone or only has one other family member with no other concerning medical conditioners or medical conditions or behaviors, this may be something that drops off your list or goes to the lower end of your list. The next is disposing of unused medication promptly. When we have prescribed medication, there are many circumstances in which patients don't use as much as we have prescribed them. That medication then is then available to them for years and years or however long until they decide to get rid of that medication. I've had many patients tell me that they've kept medications that were more than 10 years old just in case they needed them. So it's important to help them dispose of their unused medications and help them find places that are near them to dispose of them properly. Um, they should get rid of them when they no longer need them. For patients with pain, if they have an acute pain episode and they only have acute pain, after that acute pain is gone, we no longer expect them to need that medication, therefore they should get rid of that medication. For patients with various chronic pain conditions, when they're prescribed a medication for chronic pain, they will be on it for a period of time, but if that medication is then discontinued, any supply that they have left, they should get rid of promptly. There should be no need, no need for them to uh, hold on to that medication. And lastly, in the state of Michigan and in various states across the country, there are certain laws that we are required to uh, uphold or abide by. And one of those is called, uh, is, rel is related to the Start Talking form. The Start Talking form is a form that is used when any patient is prescribed an opioid. And that Start Talking form is a form that just simply describes the risks, many of which we've talked about or you've talked about before, that occur with any patient. And so this is a form, even if you're not in the state of Michigan, that can be used just as a general guideline. But if you have a specific law you need to follow, those would be a, a form you would need to get. In the state of Michigan, that law covers things uh, such as that every patient, regardless uh, of their medication use or past medical history, is at risk of developing a substance use disorder when they're prescribed an opioid. That risk is present simply because of the medication. Many patients will have their risk factors increase because of uh, their personal behaviors, their past medical history, their other medical conditions or, or medications, but that medication alone provides risks for patients to develop a substance use disorder. That's the first point on the start talking form. Other ones that are covered are things such as uh, Opioid use in pregnancy or those that uh, are of age to become pregnant, those things are important, but again, you may not talk about them with everybody. So when I try to describe and educate patients, I'm usually spending at least 20 to 25 minutes solely just on education, and I'm only talking about three highlights. I try to get them to understand three things that they can take with them. 
after I educate them on these, I ask them to tell it back to me in words that they've understand. And then I repeat it back to them in terms of what I heard them say. So we can help identify any gaps in what I said, what they heard, and what they're understanding from that. So when you're educating patients, think about where they're actually at in their care process and what they'll actually take home from that. If they're in the hospital, they're going to get inundated with information, and it's going to be very difficult for them to understand all of this information and take this home with them. If you have them in a clinic or in a pharmacy or in a space where they're not acutely ill, they're much more likely to be able to take in that education. You may be able to get away with educating them for a longer period of time and having them understand it. Give this, give the education to them, and then give them resources that they can take home and read further about. Some of the resources here for patients, first, your local pharmacist. Pharmacists are capable, and I may be biased here, but they're capable of educating patients on these risks. At a minimum, they'll have the medication prescription guides that they can hand to patients, and they can spend time with talking to them. Uh, a national uh, organization, the CDC, has fact sheets on opioids. There's a link to that here. This simply just discusses the risks that are related to opioids. Here at Michigan, the, the M-Open program has a number of patient resources that are publicly available. And then lastly, each state has resources available for patients. So in Michigan, it's the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, and the link is here for you. They have resources that uh, similarly match all of the other ones. So what you should do is you should find resources that are both publicly available, that are easily accessible, and that makes sense to whatever the patient's condition is that you're trying to help them manage. You should provide these resources to these patients, either in print form if they don't have uh, the internet available to them, or provide them in links. You can give, this, give them this information so that they can take home, but that's not enough. You should then follow up with each of these patients after they've had time to digest this information at home and after they've gotten into their own routine of how they're using their medication. Maybe how you recommended they store their medications is not working and is making pain control worse, or maybe that they haven't yet actually disposed of medications. You should follow up with each of your pieces of education and the resources that you've given to patients so that you're reinforcing education. Each time I see a patient, I'm going over the same materials, whether or not they've heard it from me before. And I will actually say up front, I know you've heard me say this before, but this is how important this is. And I'll go through the same education points. And I get most of my patients to laugh at that because they do understand that I'm being serious, but they they know that I'm going to say this to them until I'm blue in the face and until they're blue in the face because that's how important education is around the use of medications for patients with pain.